Now, most of you will know that Todd and, and his family are members of our, our yeah. right club, <laughs> and uh, this has turned into a tradition uh, because it's happened twice. That, uh, <laughs> the family have been along uh, Christmas time for our Christmas uh, uh, barbecue meeting, where the members who uh, haven't had a feed for a while uh, turn up and have a free meal on us, and it's lovely to have you and uh, Russell and. Uh, Sharon, thank you. No, thanks for having me. It's always great to be back and obviously catch up with you all annually. I'd love, love to be coming back to Adelaide more often, but unfortunately it's uh, almost become annual. So yeah, it's good to be back and um, look forward to uh, sharing a few stories from the year so far. Okay, and what a year it's been. Um, a few years ago, you finalised the dream of driving at the top. <laughs> is it working now? Uh, <laughs> uh, Todd's is working. Right? Yep. Todd, is yours working? Yep. Yep. Okay. Yes. We yes. have yes. got another one here somewhere. <coughs> one thing that could be guaranteed is that the microphone won't work. <laughs> How's that? Were you up yeah. okay. okay. So, a few years ago, you realised the dream of getting in Div 1 and um, what a dream it, it was. Uh, it's two years ago now, 2017? Yes, three. Yeah, yeah, so uh, yeah, for me, obviously, got my first shot in the Supercars program as a wildcard entrant in 2017, and we won the Super 2 Championship. And um, as you said, you know, the dream was always to get the Supercars, and then what was a dream almost become my biggest nightmare in one year. But um, yeah, the beauty of supercars racing that is a, is a brutal championship. There's lots of elements involved, both at the track and away, probably more so away from the track. And then all the politics involved as well, which has uh, been a big part of this season, unfortunately. But um, you know, it's all part of learning the, the program and un understanding the championship of how you, you go from being that kid that's you know, it's your passion and trying to get to that level, then actually trying to break through and become a, a full-time driver and trying to stay in the championship becomes a whole new challenge. And uh, that was something we faced this year, but fortunately, you know, we had a we had a relatively strong year. We had some kind of breakthrough moments throughout the season, and fortunately, with that, I was uh, granted an opportunity. Um, as of last week, we announced a new deal uh, to be driving with Brad Jones, Brad Jones Racing for 2012. Yeah, it's a really exciting um, chapter of my career now to probably you know, help take my career to that next step. Obviously, I've been part of Matt Stone Racing now for six years, so. Uh, although I only look 12, it's been a long part of my life. Um, six years I've been there for now. Um, so it's, it, time has definitely flown. I haven't driven, the only time I've actually driven for outside of Matt Stone Racing was Brad Jones Racing a couple of years ago as, a, as a, an enduro driver. So it is quite ironic that I've ended up there two years later. Uh, very happy, you know, the, the team at BJR. The, although they're probably rated as a bit of an underdog team up and down the pit lane, they're probably one of the largest teams. You know, they've got 50 odd personnel running around in the workshop. They'll be running four cars in the main game championship next year. Also, a car in a Super 2 and a car in a Super 3 championship. So it's going to be a busy year for the whole team. Uh, obviously teaming up with another South Australian, Nick Perkett. So it's going to be exciting to uh, team up a teammate for the first time. Essentially, I haven't had a teammate for a few years now. So I finally get to look at someone else's data and work out how they go fast. So I'm looking forward to that. And um, yeah, trying to keep pushing forward you know, from a personal point of view and see what happens next year. Wow, okay, that gets us down to question number 13. <laughs> Is that a hint? <laughs> no, 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 that was good. I couldn't have done that better. So one of the, one of the aspects that I, uh, you know, that, that I noticed this year that I, where, where I really felt for you was having a fresh co-driver for the endurance. You know, now, I mean, he, he didn't do such a bad job, but I felt like you sort of had to push a lot harder yourself to try and make up for Jack's shortcomings. Would that be unkind? No. Look, obviously, it was, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, look, it's a tough, it was a tough call. Um, obviously, for the team to work out what what co-drive we put in the car for this year, and obviously for me, I was pretty determined to have someone that was in the car that could, you know do the job with me and I, I felt like we, we had a, a really good package so there's no reason why we couldn't get a breakthrough result and you know we finished fifth book and go which is the round before Bathurst and uh, we had a great bit of momentum going with the team internally and it was 
you know, starting to come together really well. And obviously with Jack Smith jumping in for the first time as a as a co-driver was a big tall tall ask of him. Obviously his experience in supercars is you know relatively limited, but um, look he did a good job. It was just probably a tough order for him because you know Bathurst was the first enduro this year. So you know for anyone to do their first enduro and then to turn up at Bathurst for the first time is. Uh, it's an extremely tough challenge. I wouldn't wish that on anyone. Um, so yeah, look, he was thrown in the deep end, and look, he did a good job. He handled the car over straight in every race that he did. But you know, unfortunately, yeah, it was a probably our weakest part of the championship. But um, that's not certainly not pointing fingers at anyone. At the end of the day, I was the one that crashed the car at Bathurst and stove it in the wall. So um, yeah, it was it was a tough campaign. But um, you know, all in all, the year was was really positive. There was a lot of, as I said before, a lot of breakthrough moments. You know, to start the year at Adelaide where we were. Last in the championship last year, we had a you know, we were, you know, drinking our sorrows away. Basically, it was a pretty miserable year, and um, then to turn up at Adelaide, stick the car in the top ten shootout, and have a top ten result to start the year off was really special. And that really come down to the work that was put in over the off season. You know, it was uh, we all understood the challenge ahead, and we just uh, regrouped and come back stronger and harder. And you know, fortunately, it paid off. Yeah, yeah. So Jack wasn't Jack wasn't so bad, but we, I think we all sort of felt for it. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm trying to you know, look at it in a positive light. No, I think he, he, he'll probably go on to do bigger and better things. And, uh, I think his dad's got more money than you have. Uh, <laughs> well, they both work in transport, but it's debatable how involved they are. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, yeah, okay. No, no, that's good. So I think, um, well, not everyone would have known that at Mapstone Racing, they had, um, they had approached you earlier in the year and told you that they, you didn't have a drive with them for probably it was five months before the end of the season. How hard was that, working with a team that you knew were going to let you go? Yeah, it was... It was uh, I had a girlfriend like that once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes after six years, we should cut it off a lot earlier. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. uh, look, it, it was tough. You know, it was, essentially, it was set up that winter where I got the, you know, was Matt and I sat down and I was pretty keen to obviously looking at what the future was going to hold for me and the team and everything like that and we had a pretty strong couple of rounds leading up to that so you know, at that point for me I was pretty excited what the future was going to hold and we had a great, although we're only a small team in single car operation we had a, a great, group, group, great group of uh, guys behind the scenes you know, making it all happen from a performance aspect and I think that's what really helped us get the results that we did this year I felt like we kind of batted above our average at some elements, you know, some rounds in particular which was cool Rewarding, but um, yeah, it was a bit demoralising at first. You know, Winston, you know, as I said, you know, it's very early on in the season to get told that you really that uh, there's not going to be a gig here for you next year. So basically, good luck trying to get a drive elsewhere. It was um, yeah, tough to take in at first, but you know, you have to kind of use that as energy to try and spin it around and, and show that uh, you know you're worth of a place in the game. And then you know, essentially, the next round for us was. Um, you know, basically, you know, things started to get a little bit messy there because I was on the hunt for a drive elsewhere, and there was then some things in the media got taken out of context, which upset a few people. Which was not really what was what I was trying to portray. I was just trying to put myself out there that I was looking for a drive, and mm. that's when you start getting involved in the politics and the messy part of the sport. But anyway, we got through all that, and um, you know, fortunately, we had a really strong year. And you know, no matter what was going on behind the scenes, we were able to keep turning up and put a competitive car on track and we could still get on with the job. So sometimes when there's wine in the valley that gets the most out of you sometimes as well. So yeah, um, yeah it was yeah look it's the in- in- interesting thing of the sport is that um, it teaches you a lot of things probably more so out of the car than in the car and what doesn't kill you make you stronger and you know, fortunately I was able to press on from that and you know show that I was capable of staying in the championship and provide an opportunity with Brad and you know, when Brad approached me um, a few months back, he you know, took me on with open arms, and he was in it for the right reasons. And one of the guy that was wanting to do the job properly and hungry to succeed. So it's yeah, it's, it was pretty cool to to have that, that phone call from Brad and you know, the, to be to finally feel like you're in that position where a team wants you for the right reasons is really cool. So yeah, looking forward to what the future holds now. I'm, I'm sure yeah, it must have been a very difficult time. Uh, you had a few different sponsors, multiple sponsors over the years, Fresh. Um, Deagle, what are they called? Rats and deagles on the car and look brilliant every time? Yeah, because every time I felt we brought the car out of the truck, I had a different sponsor right down the side of the car, which is pretty hard to 
to follow from a from a, I suppose outside the sports concern, you know, spectators go, Oh, where's the where's the silver bullet? Oh, it was orange this weekend, so <laughs> get used to it, you know. So it's uh it was confusing. I think he used to play a few mind games on the drive, so every time I look in the mirror and go, Oh, who's that? No, yeah, it's Todd, you know, like so uh, yeah, so it was, um, it was good, you know, fortunately, you know, we had great supporters over the years that have, you know, stuck by me and helped, helped make it all work, and um, that was probably one of the main reasons why Matt Stone wanted me to move on for next year, because, you know, financially they were looking for a driver that could essentially walk into the team and essentially fund the whole, whole program, so, you know, obviously in our point of view, we, we weren't in that position at all, so we, you know, worked obviously very hard over the years to get sponsors on board and get, get the team to where they are today but um, yeah look it was, it, was, it was a good year and we worked with what we had and we had some really good moments so yeah it was good. Talking about sponsorship are you still the uh, largest purchaser of Snake Brothers sausages? <laughs> Snake and Sons. Snake and Sons? Yeah. Yep. 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 So I did, did my visit there today and bought I think 20 kilos worth of snacks for the weekend so <laughs> yeah no, so uh, did you barbecue in your house or is this is a clean yeah, visit? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. yeah barbecue queen sitting over there so <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised you didn't have one of the tools out there before. I'd uh, rather he wanted to. Yeah, yeah. I warned her, I said just stay out of Keith's way. <laughs> Keith Thanks, Janelle. Yeah, do you want to just explain to people how they can get the name on the boot of the car. And will that still happen in 2020? Um, yeah, look, it's something that we're trying to work on. You know, it's been, it's been actually a really cool element that we've been able to introduce to, to the sport that wasn't really seen before. So essentially what we did was trying to set up a membership program where there was a lot of people in, in our support network that wanted to support but didn't know how. And obviously sponsorship is a large number, especially at the supercar program, but you know, introducing a membership program where we have anything from a, a name on the transport and a name on the boot lid of the race car where you get involved that way and we put a, a few benefits involved for the members to, yeah, I suppose be part of our journey. So that's something that, yeah, we're, we're, we're reviewing at the moment and working out what we do next year. But yeah, we'd love to keep it going. We've, we've had that up and running for five years now. It gets bigger and better over years. So yeah. quite, a, quite a unique setup, isn't it? Yes. Um, yes. Is it true that there were 13 drivers out of the, out of a drive at the end of 2019? Yeah, it was music and chairs out of control. Yeah, yeah it was um, pretty crazy. You know, you, you do your driver signing on a Thursday before a race meeting, and all the drivers are talking to each other like, oh, you know, you speaking with Walkinshaw, and oh, he's speaking with Brad, or you better give this guy a phone call, and oh, that sponsor's leaving this team and that team, and it's been this year's been crazy. I, look, obviously, I've only been involved in the supercars scene for a couple of years now, but. Just going off all the other comments and you know, being involved this year, it's certainly been quite eye-opening you know, of how chaotic it's been behind the scenes, from, especially from a driver's point of view. So it's you know, probably, yeah, as you said, you know, it's probably 70 or 80 percent of the drivers up until probably more, more than half the season wondering if they've got a gig at the team that they're at or if not at all. So it's, it's not a fun space to be and obviously it feels like every race meeting we fighting all the guys that they're all driving for for their careers at, at some stage so obviously that creates a totally different mentality of how you race and how you work in a team environment and all those sort of things and how you front up at work when all the head of management don't even want you in the race team but here you are showing up every day at the workshop and annoying everyone so it's uh is, is that why you had to leave <laughs> <laughs> like, <I don't> <laughs> It's, uh, yeah, look, it's a, it's, a, it's a savage old industry, you know, supercars, obviously it's, it's very much a, a business-driven sport and you know, it's, it's eye-opening when you come into the sport, when it's your passion, it's your love and it's everything that you live and breathe and want to do and then you get there and as I said, it can almost become your worst nightmare, but it doesn't mean that, you, you know, I'm certainly very grateful for the opportunity to be doing what I still would love to do and that's drive race cars and, you know, never thought I'd have that as, you know, to put that on my business card as racing car driver per se, so it's a pretty cool situation to be in but yeah the the you know what goes on behind the sport is, is certainly very eye-opening um yeah it's said you know when you're young you that's what you've got to learn and and yeah. put up with and you know obviously as you get more established and you get more involved in the sport it becomes a bit more understandable and complex and you seem you seem to work out who you who you do and don't associate yourself with as well who your friends are yes. how many people that are, that are how many of the drivers are really having a good time at race meetings <laughs> Ones that getting paid, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, no, we all have a great time. But I think, you know, 
being involved in supercars, you think it'd be dog eat dog amongst all the drivers, but the, there is actually a really high level of respect between all the drivers up and down pit lane, I feel. Obviously, there's a couple of guys I'd like to steer clear of everyone and hang, hang low or whatever, and it's, uh, you know, that's probably the, the best thing, is that we spend so much time together, obviously at the race meetings, every second weekend we're racing against each other, but that's all the PR and sponsorship commitments and things with supercars and signings, we're always in each other's back pockets, so if you don't make friends with someone, you're going to be a bit of a loner. So, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's a good family to be part of, and obviously it's very professional and very elite. So, you know, essentially in supercars now, there's only 24 gig, gigs available. So, you know, to be essentially one in a million, to be driving a supercar in this country, I feel very privileged to be in that position. So, hopefully I can do it for many more years and keep achieving goals that I want to achieve.